the stream. That is way too loud in my ears. Like, way, way too loud. Alright, that looks good from a size perspective. Done. That should be good positioning wise. And do we have my audio coming through? We do indeed. So, hello, hello, people of the internet. It is I, Soul Rock Dragon, here back with more Fate Grand Order Cosmos and the Lost Belts. We are we are doing part two of Lost Belt 6, the Fade Round Table Domain, Avalon La Fade, the moment a planet is born. That was a mouthful. <clears throat> so, last time we did do the section nine, I believe it was, of Avalon La Fade. And it was a fair bit of a section. We got a lot of character development for some characters, which was nice. I will say it was very nice to finally get some character development for some of those characters up there. Um, just doing a quick check here. It said 40 days, but I don't know what's 40 days left on, so that's not my concern. Um, I don't really have anything else... Burning a hole in my pocket at the moment here. I guess I could. What's my level up? Like? Who's at the top of the list? I forgot to get a water. Vritra is at the top of the list. She's a four star here. Um, I do have a lot of embers saved up. I filter her out the sea experience. I do have a lot of embers saved up. I could start pushing towards getting some people done, but I am gonna really quickly though get another fresh water because I completely forgot to do that. So I will be right back. because there was no cold ones in the fridge, so... I mean, I guess I do remember hearing that warm water is better for you, technically, but I don't know, that just sounds weird to me. But I think I... How many of these do I have? Do I have, a... I have an odd number, don't I? That's 5, 10, 15. Yeah, I have an odd number of those. That's gonna be annoying. But, um, you know what, I think I've got enough four-star embers that I can justify it. So, 10, 15, and then I did see another batch of five each up higher. There we go. 20 of each. And my inventory is, of course, full. Um, all right. Well, let's start clearing out this inventory a little bit here. So, Vritra is at the top of the list, and we will go ahead and level her up. Let us start with the foes. I had foes already on me. I really should pay better attention sometimes, shouldn't I? Really, really should. Yeah, let's get Vritra up there, and then... Maybe every other stream I'll start off by doing this or something? I don't know, I'll... I'll come to a decision on that at a later point in time. But reach early, we will be getting four-star embers only. I'm not going to feed you any of the five-stars. Those are Melt's exclusive five-star embers, which we're going to be saving up for the next um, increased experience thing on the what's it. Oh. Realistically enough, I should probably save these for that too, but... Oh wait, you're a 5 star! I thought you were a 4 star for some reason. That's my bad, Vritra. My bad completely. Um, so... 
Let's just start claiming until it says I can't claim anymore. I'm pretty sure I can filter the um, embers that it selects as well. So Retra, and then, yep, let's not do the five stars. There we go. That'll make this a little bit faster. But yeah, just doing this because why not? Want to level up somebody? It scratches an itch, and it needs to be done eventually, anyways. That was either a super or a great suck. Nice. It just occurred to me, though, I have no idea what her ascension mats and such are going to look like, so... We could be in trouble. I'm in danger, potentially, at least. I mean, it's also, we're not going to be needing an arts-based lancer that's AoE, which is what Breitra is, but still. Mm, so this is ascension. It feels a lot like molting. Well, it's not a bad feeling. And learn the new skills, sworn enemy of the gods, increase special attack against divine for all allies for one turn, and a single NP gauge increase. Okay, that's not bad. So a specialized battery alongside a... or a specialized attack buff alongside a battery. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I can probably, at this point, filter out the foes as well, and get back to cleaning from the bottom. Making more room in my present box for anniversary in case they, you know, choose to flood us with gifts and presents galore. Which they might, I don't know. I've only looked into the GSSR as well as the Anniversary Servant. I don't really know much else about this coming anniversary beyond that. Alright, so next ascension, still looking good on the mats. Ascension. Caring about one's looks is such a human thing to do. Appearance is a trifling thing in the eye of gods or even demons. So don't give me that look of both joy and sorrow. Ah, about the fact that she didn't change. Ah, uh, still looking good there. I'm just now realizing how much of some materials I have. Like, oh, that was great. So that should get us all the way up there to 69. Nice. But yeah. I feel like maybe it makes a good like being these. Yeah, I'm not making a mistake. This is what mainly Draconic wanted me to uh, push. Also, this does get a blank image because I'm lazy and haven't bothered to put an image of her yet. <clears throat> Fine. Since I'm full, I suppose I should change into a form that's better suited to battle. Don't get used to this, okay? Indestructible Demon EX. Apply Guts for one time five turns and apply a state to increase MP gauge each turn for yourself and increase the MP strength for all allies. So, she's got a lot of batteries. And the Guts is nice for survivability, and I'm really digging that final that ascension look. That looks amazing. Like, she looks amazing in that card art, as well as just her general outfit. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Alright, and we keep pushing through my present box. I do need to definitely clear out this, just because I do know Nero Fest should be coming up soon, which is gonna be another strain on the present box, so it's another reason I should be doing this stuff as well. Okay, we'll get Retra all the way up there, see what we have left, as far as the present box goes, to know for um, the next level up one, because Goey is next. She's also a 5-star, so she's gonna take a fair bit as well. And final ascension for Vricha. Oh, we'll go ahead and remove her from the list here as well. Delete the road. And that puts Goey at number one position with the precious poison of Serenity in two, Shiron in three. Very much like in that. Good grief. They call me an evil dragon. I can't believe you managed to raise me up to this point. Do you want to be destroyed, master? No, I know. 
You just believe. Though I'm not sure of who, what or who you believe in. What I do know for sure is that the moment that belief is shattered, humanity will be consumed by evil. If you don't want to live with regret, you should get everything you have to keep floundering about. <laughs> We do have belief that humanity will come out on top, and she is very right there. If we let that belief shatter, it will not be a good thing. It's looking like Goey is the last 5-star in the rank-up queue for a fair bit of time here. After Goey, the next 5-star is in position number... Just a moment here to get the ascensions, or the level up started. So Goey's at 1, then it's 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 3, 4, 3, 2 or 1, and then there's a 5. So 12 positions down is Voyager. Poor Voyager. People don't like the best little bro. Also, I just scrolled down far enough. Santa Karna is lower and is going to be getting bullied here by Mitra. I imagine. Okay. Um, almost done with Ritra. I'm almost out of stored up in the present box at least four stars. Now we're starting to get to... Oh, that's main quest clear rewards. I didn't even realize I clicked that. See, so yeah, now we're starting to get to um, shop things. I have... I didn't realize I had silver embers. Why haven't I been using those? Whoops. All right. And that was a great suck, probably. Super or great, doesn't matter. That is Vritra leveled up, and we'll go ahead and skill her up as well here. Up to a nice 666, and then we will finally get on with Avalon Le Fay. Section 10, I think? And we have plenty of materials to get Vitra up there. Nice. And plenty of QP. I think maybe one of these other times I'll look into um, skilling up another servant or two to 10, 10, 10, perhaps. I know I've got enough lures, and I've got plenty of QP down there, as can be seen. Though I think it's like 120 million to get a single 5 star all the way up there, from 9 to 10, maybe? It's been a while, so I can't remember the exacts. Probably be Muramasa at the top of the list though, just because he's got a really good kid. Alright, and that is Vritra leveled up. Leveled up, skilled up, all that up. And yeah. Let's get down to business and do the loss belt now. It's just been 13 minutes of stalling, slash padding out. But it's time to begin section eleven. Londinium. This is a 3-6, a 7-arrow node. Looks like I got freedom of choice here. It is Avenger and a Berserker for the servants. Um, I will go ahead and bring Da Vinci, since I do have my own Muramasa. We will throw here. We have Gareth. Um, and that's kind of it. You know, I... He's not leveled up, so it's not going to be completely story accurate. Wait, I determined I don't have him, do I? Yeah, I think I determined that I don't have red hair. I don't know, is he a four? I don't know if he's a four star or something, but... It's weird that I don't have him. I could have swore I had rolled him at some point. But I'm gonna actually look him up at this point. <laughs> See what, what uh, class servant he is. Make sure I'm just not blinding myself. So, now that we've put some distance between us and Camelot to avoid any possible 
trouble to, with the royal soldiers who just didn't know about the Queen's orders not to harm us. We've moved along the northern border. Okay, Red Hair is story locked. That's why I've not gotten him. And come across Chocolate Field. That's truly a sight to hold. Chocolate! So that's why I don't have Red Hair. He's a story locked servant. That would explain that. Chocolate growing straight out of the ground. Oh, that's heaven. Candy! No way. How the hell does this work? I have to take a closer look. What are you two doing? This field doesn't belong to you. You should be ashamed of yourselves traveling someone else's field with your dirty shoes. Yeah, if you're gonna go around tasting this stuff, you need to do so from one of the edges. Ah, uh, have a trot. Oh, oh field of luxe premium chocolate bars. Lady Aurora once gave me a tiny piece of. This can't compare to a carrot, but it may well be the sweetest thing I've ever tasted. Cannonball! Now don't you start to, you idiot. So good, it's a freak. Messy but so yummy. <laughs> I'm glad you're all enjoying yourselves. Oh, you be so relaxed about this, Oberon. We still need to keep our eye out for any signs of pursue. What is it, Gareth? Are you gonna jump in there with them? Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Everyone, please settle down. You can't eat that chocolate. Oh. oh no, I knew it. These are Knox chocolate fields. I've heard about them. They're made with paralysis agent, charming calories at the wazoo. Any fairy who tastes this chocolate becomes a hopeless chocoholic. And they have to do whatever Knox says for the rest of their lives. According to Garrett's own research. Mm -hmm. Chocolate field wars. Crap. <laughs> he was having... No, he was either drooling or having some himself. Those moors just popped up out of the field. They must have been lying in wait to ensnare any fairies who succumbed to the chocolate paralysis. First fairies eat chocolate, then the moors eat the fairies. What a perfectly devious predatory tactic. And I'm afraid none of the others will be of any help now that their veins are full of chocolate poison. Come on, Marmasa. This one's all up to us. You got it. Good luck, Gareth. Marmasa, why don't you just take a step back? And um, what's that you're holding behind you? Sorry, it was right there in arm's reach, so I just couldn't help myself. Some wise elder you turned out to be. Oh, Marmasa, you don't need to apologize. It's chocolate. Everybody loves chocolate. Poisonous chocolate. So, that was a debuff that didn't seem to do anything? I don't know. It could still kick in later, so... Also, turning down the volume because it is blindingly loud in my ears. Lots of curse. Finally, the part of the chain. That'll be good. Good deal. If I crit at least more than once, it would have been good. You know, I don't know why I keep forgetting to use this Da Vinci's first skill. It's like, it's really useful. Um, so this should be game set match for this one. And I'm going to say we're going to risk the charisma. Oh. And we'll go ahead and throw the spirit on this time, WG as well. And then we'll do a Castorius arts afterwards so she can get her ranking. 
Good job, WG. That's gonna be an MP2 blast. Actually, possibly MP3 blast from Aramasa here. Against the Big Thunder Monster. Big Thunder Monster. Very descriptive. And it's not gonna be a fast story at MP, I believe, because. Hot damn. That is some good game for Muramasa. Uh, let's increase this crit start dropping as well, and block any kind of buff that it gives. What we'll do. And Muramasa Smash! I'm not expecting to see too big of a number here. It's actually a lot better than I expected. A lot better than I expected there. Well done, Muramasa. Well done. Bye, Da Vinci. You did your best. And we'll go ahead and do a do do of all those debuffs, get a nice little attack boost, and then Maramasa destroys. Mm. That feels a little stiff. Huh? If I was running. There we go. I was a little worried there. I feel like I'm gonna get all of the week's master missions done, no issues as well. Oh, does this mean none of you are paralyzed? Sorry, Gareth, but no, we're totally fine. But I don't think this chocolate is poison at all. That's right, incidentally, when people refer to chocoholics, they're talking about people who just really love chocolate or who'll go all the way north just to have some. I'm pretty sure it's not actually a medical condition. Oh, wow, you're right. This is good. It's sweet and crunchy and easy to eat. It doesn't even make me thirsty. I feel so much more alert now, too. <laughs> Still, it is a rare luxury good, and these fields really do belong to Nock. So if you keep sampling the chocolate without permission, well, see for yourselves. Oh crap, there's a huge army headed this way. But hang on, what are they wearing? Wee -woo, wee -woo, wee -woo. Damn, they got us surrounded. These numbers, this honey be like magical energy pressure, it's... That's far enough, you shameless tourists. You've got a lot of nerve eating your fill of my chocolate. Or is it that... Is this your way of applying to be my slaves down to my great, great grand successor? I'd recognize that voice anywhere. That's right, now throw yourselves at my feet and beg forgiveness. I don't care what backwater town you fairies hail from, but look at this beauty should tell you all you need to know about what you're de who you're dealing with. Now on that note, I, Queen Knock, pass judgment on these foul chocolate thieves. That's one count of stealing government property, one count of smuggling valuable crop cultural property, one count of dining and dashing, and one count of les majesty. For these four crimes, I sentence you all to spend the next hundred years packaging chocolate for retail, after which you'll live out the rest of your days in Edinburgh while receiving a comfortable pension to match the contributions of your labor. I knew it. It's Queen Maeve. What? Interesting, though. So, either this is the actual servant Maeve, who's been inhabited by a fairy, or a fairy that looks like Maeve, and that means that Maeve could be part fae herself? Perhaps. Maybe we'll get more elaboration here. This is a formation restricted chapter, I would think it said. I first met her in Glochester about five years ago. She was like a storm in a bottle, and she was the first fairy I got to know inside my village. 
Oh, Artoria knows her. <laughs> Not that it's any surprise, but for a born ruler, there's nothing better than kicking all your would-be rivals to the ground. The first princess pageant in a hundred years, and I'm the clear winner. Now go out there and tell everyone in Britain that Nock is the new queen of the Northern Fairies. Man, I didn't even make it past the preliminaries, let alone get a chance to go on stage. But that's okay, I'm only here because everyone in the village insisted I come anyway. Plus, I can't think of anything more idiotic than a princess pageant. Besides, all I really wanted to was to see what things were like outside the village for once. Oh, I feel like an idiot. What am I even doing out here? I should be back home helping with the harvest. But no, I just had to come here to help my political campaign and show everyone that Mab's successor means business. I swear, when are the elders going to stop treating me like a greenhorn? Anyway, Mab. Hang on. That's a somewhat familiar name. Queen Mab is a fairy from Romeo and Juliet. So... Interesting. So Maeve beca Mab became Maeve. Poss it's possible that there's a difference. But another Shakespearean fairy. So did Queen Mab come from proper human history is the question. Not to mention the judges' criteria for beauty is just laughable. Don't they know real beauty comes from a living life you can be proud of, not what other people think of your looks? Contestants like us are the ones who decide what's beautiful, not the peanut gallery. Oh, hello. Are you the girl from Tintangle I saw in the prelims? Huh? Um, no, no, I think you have the wrong fairy. I'm just here waiting tables part-time, so... Why didn't you come to the main event? I thought it was going to come down to you and me. I would have enjoyed beating a worthy opponent rather than demolishing competition. But you were nowhere to be seen. What did you leave early because the whole thing was so stupid? Stupid? Well, I guess I did feel pretty stupid. Why, you... You don't... You think I don't get what's going on here? I can tell you're thinking. Look at the simple little girl who's jumping for joy over a stupid trophy. She has no idea why I lost the battle, but won the war. Well, I don't like it. I won't stand for it. You and I are going to compete again. Right now. What's your best subject? Horseback riding? Dancing? Music? Combat? Chess? Whatever it is, that's going to be a real final battle. And we're not going to stop until I'm good and satisfied. Oh, but we need to do something about that horribly tacky outfit first. Mac, Dim, tear the girl's clothes up for me, will you? I'll let you wear one of my dresses instead. After that, we're going back on stage. Together, you and I are going to show these idiots in the crowd what it really means to shine like a beautiful princess. Oh, wait, what are you... Hey, knock it off, you pink-haired, honey brain ri noble rich girl, before I knock your block off. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, I had no idea you'd actually been eliminated in the preliminaries. I mean, my instincts have never been wrong before, you know. And the moment I saw you, I felt sparks all up and down my spine. Sparks! I thought there was something different about this fairy. I seriously got the impression you could turn the world on its head. Huh? Really? Is that how I actually seem to you, Nock? <laughs> I guess it's true to say about great talents becoming late, blooming late. Believe it or not, I'm actually the child of... But I was wrong. You're so unimpressive. I must have looped from zero right back around to hero. Aww. Poor Castoria. No, y you were right on there, Nock. You were right on there. Oh, is that so? Guess that means you'd better quit bragging about your instincts from now on, huh? You're right. From now on, I'll make sure to observe fairies carefully, and not just rely on my intuition. Anyway, what's your village like, Artoria? You said it's on the western tip of the southern Britain. My city's up on the northern tip, so I can't even imagine how much different it must be. The western tip of southern Britain? Isn't that where the Nameless Woods was? Hang on. Pretty sure that's where the Nameless Woods were. If we go back to Tintangle, I would like to see if that really, like, matches up. Do you get rain ash rain there? What's the color of the forest? Can you fish there? Are there any cute fairies you've got your eye on? Oh, and what was that exploding lamp you threw at me earlier? <laughs> Magecraft. N oh. Long string of dialogue. The northern fairy kept peppering me with questions, and she seemed genuinely interested in the answers. 
It's one of my nicer memories from back when we still didn't know each other well. Her name was Nak. Na Riab. Since I'm the child of prophecy, she and I are destined to butt heads one day, but she was also my very first friend. Man, Maeve is just getting good character development even when it's not Maeve. So yeah, I spent two, maybe three days in Glowchester with her a few years ago. But as you can see, she never listens to anything anyone has to say, so she didn't make a great impression. That goes for you too, Artoria. You look meek enough, but you always talk way tougher than you look. Good to see you haven't changed. Well, this is a surprise. I had no idea Artoria had a friend she was on arguing terms with. And knock knock Rabab, all fairies. I can't even imagine getting into a scuffle with her, can you? Definitely not. I'm all tongue-tied just from seeing her. Knock knock Rabab, the member of the King Clan and Queen of the North. Her magical energy covers this entire camp even as we speak. She's one of the most notable fairies in all of Britain. Her common abilities may not compare to the Tan Lin. But when it comes to otherworldly common sense and the sheer size of her fatal being, I don't think there's anyone in Fairy Britain who can even match her. I can't tell because I'm not a fairy. I'm not going to say that out loud because that just sounds like a bad words to say. <laughs> Excuse me. But look, Artoria's not backing down either. No matter how Snidenock gets with her, she gets gives twice as good as she gets. <laughs> Yep, those two are a perfect match for each other. Artoria looks meek, but is actually a huge pain in the neck. And Nock makes a lot of first impression, but she's actually very earnest. They're like two halves of a puzzle box. They may constantly be at odds, but in the end, they fit together perfectly. Quiet, you. When did I say any of you could talk? You do know you're all still under arrest for chocolate larceny, correct? Uh, yeah, I did just get a hundred million QP. Uh, I'm happy to pay you back. Hey, Artoria, come here for a second. What is it? You're not usually one to keep secrets. You want me to keep quiet about all the mischief you got up into Gloucester or something? Of course not. Besides, I didn't get into any mischief. No, I wanted to ask you about that guy who just talked back to me. Is he human? Is he your attendant? Did your dream finally come true? Oh, no, he's he's my ally. He's a mage who came here from the outside world. We're pretending he's my attendant to make things easier, but if anything, he's the one who's been helping me out. I see, so he's just a bodyguard, huh? What's his name? I can't tell since he's not wearing a collar or anything. Come on, tell me, please. Please? Are you really not? Did you eat something you should have? Maybe too much chocolate? Uh, come on, don't let her get to you. Oh, no, I've just been feeling much kinder and gentler lately. So what's his name? How long have you known him? Well, his name's Sol, and I've known him for about 20 days now. I see, so you're still more than friends, less than lovers. Not that it would matter if you were dating, of course. Huh? Uh, oh. But I digress. All that aside... Some child of prophecy you turned out to be, Artoria. What even is this ragtag band? Are you trying, like, at all? I can't believe you still don't have even have a single squat to your name. I guess you're still the one fairy my intuition just doesn't work on. When I heard that the child of prophecy who saved Norwich was named Artoria, I thought you'd finally gotten your act together. But it looks like I was wrong about you again. You're as pathetic now as you were back then. I guess a bunch of third-rate losers are the best of pathetic low-class fairy like yourself can attract. Take that back, Nock. Don't you dare make fun of my friends. They're all much more accomplished, wiser, braver, cuter, and grandpa-ish than not grandpa-ish. We know who she's talking about with that. <laughs> and if nothing else, they're way stronger than those soldiers you got waiting on you. Is that so? All right, then prove it. I'll see for myself who's stronger. Your allies are my soldiers. If you guys win, I'll pardon you for your chocolate theft, and you'll all be free to go. But... Hmm? But what? If my soldiers win, I'm taking soul for myself. Huh? Are you serious, Nock? Don't tell me soul's your type. It's not like that. I was going to need a mage for my war with Morgan anyway. Now less talking, more fighting, Artoria. Let's see which one of us is the better suited to be Britain's savior. Oh, well, Maeve wants us, er, Nock wants us as well. Interesting. Uh, Can I bring Castoria along here? 
No, it's not thematic. It wouldn't be thematically appropriate to bring Castoria. It would not. Um, the Lancers are going to be a bit of an issue. Let's go like... No, let's go like this, I think. Yeah. We'll go like this for a party. Our squad. Our compadres. Insert other sword here. King Clan Kofi. <sighs> Part of the yellow. So, 18k health. 18 to 20k with, um... Guts. Guts is the main issue I can see coming forward. There are also six enemies. Artorias cheering. Okay, so I don't need to worry about Da Vinci's thing too much here. I should probably blast the though, just for safety's sake. This does look like it's going to be a longer battle, so I should be capable of generating it again. So, focus back line. We'll go ahead and use this golden little body now. And then. Ooh, Gareth's there too. Um. We can go ahead and do. That. That. It's a little bit of a waste to use it, but it's fine. And then we'll do. Good. So we're at least eliminating one, maybe even two. In this round. So three down total. Gareth got a little stronger. And let's go ahead and pop this now. Squire of Prophecy. Did she always have this? Is that always what that skill is called? I don't feel like it is. Uh anyways, do do do. In fact, I'm gonna check here, cuz. I don't feel like that's what her skill normally is called. So servants. And then. Dual answers. This is going to be even faster. Gareth. Go. Let's see. Garrett. Yep. Okay, so this is. The first skill is named differently for this NPC version of Gareth. Initially, it's Battle Continuation C, but it evolves into the Wolf Never Sleeps B. I'm not insane. And after the Avalon LeFay NPC, it's just. Fire Pop. Oh, even the second skill is named differently. It's normally Gareth the Mains, but here it is Gareth the Good Instincts. And not just give these fools a boost. Um, let's go ahead and do Game of Thrones Stars, and then have a Da Vinci rollout. Third skill is also the Spring of Transformation is nice for Avalon. I kind of didn't realize until just I actually read her skills, but yeah, they're different. That took me way too long to realize that. <laughs> like, way too long. Oh, there's. Why is there a Moor? It just occurred to me that there's a freaking Moors here, too. What are you doing here, Knock? Employing Moors? For shame. And you gave that more than guts, too? Shame, knock. Shame. 
in the Fatal Battle. He's against General Fairies. So that is Yarmund and um, Fion. And I was honestly not expecting the final wave to be Lancers. So I'm pretty sure though that at the very least Fion has Divinity, so this might deal more damage. That stronger smack. Boost. And Muramasa Smash. No, did not get the special damage modifier, it looks like. Sadly, some very low damage numbers there. Oh, Gareth was charmed. That's. A more than a little annoying. Um. Let's keep going. Our mouth is a leaper after all, so. Man, this is this is kind of sad, man. I'm not gonna lie. The old man finally went to bed. Habe, thought. All right. Um, let's increase this. Get a ducks as well as target focus. And then we will do something along these lines. Do, do, do. Uh, do this as well. For w -G. And actually, it'll do like this. Get the Vinci Brave Chain to hopefully transition into a second. Hmm. So, uh, Gareth lives, and now we have this, which is going to make it even better. And we'll do that. So, Gareth, focus here. So Gareth's given chase. Then there was one. And... Do, do, do. Alrighty. We are blistering through this week's master missions as well, which is kind of funny. So, is it just me, or were those very generals? Yeah, they might have looked an awful, awfully familiar, but I'm pretty sure we're only seeing things. Let's just move on. I don't think we were seeing things, Da Vinci. I don't think we were seeing things. There you see, Solomon's team won. I told you they were amazing. Now let us go free. Queens are supposed to keep their promises, right? No, of course. Believe me, I don't have time to be messing around with you either. I was in the middle of running a military exercises when you decided to steal my chocolate. 
Also, my enemy is Queen Morgan, not the Child of Prophecy. I have nothing to say to a low-class fairy who still hasn't made a name for herself. Go wherever you like, for all I care. Oh, this has been the King Clan. The King Clan doesn't see the Child of Prophecy as competition. I think it would be to your advantage to capture us rather than let us go free. Of course I see his competition. I'm the only king fit to rule Britain. As far as I'm concerned, both Morgan and the Child of Prophecy are obstacles to my rule. That said, I can't take Morgan's army lightly. If I'm going to win, I'm going to need to use everything I can. Either Morgan will jump at my provocation and leave her castle to face me, or I'll attack her castle for myself once all my preparations are complete. Either way, I'll need to keep the other clans in check in the meantime, which is why I need want the Child of Prophecy to keep stirring things up. Get it? The more you scurry around making trouble, the more Morgan will have to divert forces from me to focus on you. I don't really expect you to ring all the bells in pilgrimage, but you maybe manage two of them. If you can manage that, I'll take care of the rest. I'll take control of Camelot, send Morgan packing, and banish every human from this island. As a descendant of the Northern Fairies and the Dog of the Great Map, I'll be the one to restore Britain to the way it always was meant to be. Still, I'm also very generous, so I'm willing to make a few exceptions. If the humans are willing to change their ways, I could set up an autonomous zone for them to live in. As proof, I grant you permission to speak freely, soul. Is there anything you want to ask me? Go ahead, just this once I'll give you an honest answer. In that case... Um, we should be serious. What if you teamed up with the Round Table Army to take down Morgan? No chance. I may be willing to tolerate humans, but team up with them? Absolutely not. As far as I'm concerned, the Human Round Table Army is even more of a disgrace than Morgan soldiers. If they ever dared show themselves before me, I'd mow them down without a second thought. Excuse, excuse me, Lady Knock, but we received a request from Edinburgh. What is it? Man of chances like this don't come every day, you know. If this is about military exercises, it can wait. I'm sorry, milady. It's about the Morris disease, if I may. <sighs> Not enough transcription for subjects. Number of Sheffield refugees. Tell them I'll make a list right away. I'll take. I'll make the selections myself. <laughs> Looks like our little chat is over. You guys are free. Go wherever you like. Oh, but I will just say one last thing. Try to conduct yourself with at least some dignity, Artoria. Nobody will follow a king who can't even look the part. True. Very true. But Nock is an interesting character. I wonder what she means by having humans change their ways, though. Uh, was this a formation restricted? No. So... We will do this setup then. Uh, the assassin will be a little annoying, but we'll make do. <sighs> Actually, no, because I've got Castoria. Black dogs. Alright, uh, <laughs> Uh, I can throw Muramas MP at this. It's a Oh, 
This habitat is sadly a support base. Slider will not really do anything other than keeping us alive and healthy. This is mainly Maramasa's fight now that I'm really looking at it. Because he's our only damage again P. Uh. Got Black Lion Fire Fairy there. It's ready to go here in a moment. We do have Castoria ready to MP to be safe. Uh, but, just to be super safe. Just blast him! Oops. Daddy. Um, yeah, we should be fine. Oh, yeah. No need to, to cast story yet up here. Or maybe I was wrong. Oh, I was thankfully not wrong. Whew. And of course, it's a single enemy. Why is the final wave like almost always a single enemy now? It's kind of annoying. Just a little bit. Oh well, Muramasa Smash. Also, this, um, this, um, Mystic Code is almost maxed out. Very nice. ちゃんと飯食ってんのか武器は友かく弾力が足りてなかったぜ。ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、
So I'm trying to see... Is that... No, that that's... That's probably not Tintangle there. It's gotta be, like, somewhere in the Misty Coast. Which is weird. So, view, the front of Londinium. Looks like it's a formation restricted. Good job, everyone. I know it wasn't easy coming so far without stopping to sleep, but we're almost to Londinium now. Only two more hills to go. Well, first, why don't we take a quick break? Besides, it's almost lunchtime. I'm sure you'd rather have a relaxing meal outside than rocking back and forth inside a carriage for two, right, Soul? Uh, thanks. It has been a little rough, constantly in a carriage. Don't worry about it. I used to be... I could use a good stretch, too. It's great that six of us can fit in the carriage now, but it's definitely a little cramped. So we're finally visiting Londinium. I wonder what the stories say about it. Well, up until 2,000 years ago, when it was still in the Fey era, it was the largest city in all of Britain. It said that five fairy the five fairy clans coexisted there peacefully, and that they even chose a human for their lord. Really? Then, the, then does that mean Londinium used to be a human city? It sure does, but it was destroyed during an insurrection that took place at the end of the Fey era. It may have been the most heavily fortified city in Britain at the time, but I guess there wasn't much it could do against an attack from within. I still haven't found out how to end up in ruins after that, though. After all, the Queen decided to build a new castle at Camelot instead of rebuilding Londinium. I guess you don't know everything about everything after all, Oberon. It was the fairy clans that reduced Londinium to rubble. After Asik ended the war between the various clans, she appointed a human knight as her new king. A human boy who was leading the Round Table army at the time... A huge festival was held to celebrate the new king and his coming reign. But then, during his coronation, a group of anti-fairy humans started a riot. And a number of the fairies living in Londinium were killed. The clan heads were incensed, so they raided Londinium and put every soldier in the Round Table army to death. The knight who was supposed to be king fell in battle and Asik was executed after the clan heads held her responsible for the riot. Grimm the Sage managed to give them the slip. And since no one could kill the Black Knight, they crushed his ear and, and threw him into the sea. Um, okay, so, Asik was killed, the human king was ex- Asik was ex- the human king was killed in battle, Asik was executed, Grimmer, who is Ku, gave them the slip, and there was also a black knight that had their ears crushed and thrown into the sea. By that point, the Tamlin had gotten fed up with the whole ordeal and decided to go over to Orkney, taking Asik's coffin with them. That's a horrifying expression. And there were Tamlin back then, too. Asik, that's the name of the fairy who was once treated as Britain's savior, right? What I heard, her, her, the sage, the black knight, and the Tamlin all saved Britain countless times. So what's the Tamlin's name? Oh, Mike told me that back in Salisbury. Let's see, I'm pretty sure it was... Huh? That's weird, I know I've heard it before, but I can't remember what it was. Eh, don't worry about it. My point is, Lindenium has a lot of history as the home of base of Britain's humans. So this new round table army is holed up where the old one got wiped out, huh? I am the superstitious type, but don't you think that's just asking for trouble? Heh, <laughs> you'll see why it's not a problem once we get to Lindenium, Maramasa. Frankly, if you ask me, both Morgan and the clan heads ought to have their heads examined. I don't know why else they'd abandon Lindenium, even if they destroyed it. I'm surprised you know so much about Lindenium, have a cat. I mean, you don't know anything about Glowcut Chester or Salisbury. I know about Salisbury. That's the city with the big cathedral, right? I've seen Aurora before, too. I just didn't pay much attention. She's not my type. I see, sir. Are you sure you're okay missing out on all the beautiful cities? Sure, I'm sure. This isn't exactly a sightseeing tour. I'm kind of curious why you're so considerate of me, though. Fishing for a discount on your wedding dress or something? Huh? No, I'm not looking for a dress. I haven't found a partner yet. I mean, it's not that. It's just... just... just what? It's nothing. I'm gonna go fetch some water. Be right back! I was close, I almost said something I shouldn't again. Anyway, I'm kind of worried about Happy Cat. I can see Artorian's soul's future is just fine. But I can't see anything for hers. 
You can see our future's fun. Morse. Crap, I have to kill it before it touches me. Yeah. Huh, that's weird. My lance is always worked before. Alright, that's only because Artorio was helping with, out with her magecraft. But now that it's just me... Oh, this is so like me. I always get carried away like this, even though I'm weak. So I'm going to doubt here, unable to fight back, and never, never accomplished anything. You are so close. If you just taken three, no, six steps back and got a running start, you could have definitely taken it out. You're not the biggest fairy out there, so you'll need more than just the weight of a thrust to get through the moors of skin. Make sure the foot you're bracing on faces forwards instead of to the side, and try to let gravity do the hard work for you. But I guess that'll be something to work on next time, which is all the more reason to stand back up now. Percival! Oh, uh, okay. May I ask who? Me? I came out here to fetch some water and saw you going into the forest. I was going to warn you to be careful since we tend to get more set to you. But I guess it was a little too late. Luckily, there are only two of them. Do you think you can help me? I'd really appreciate it. Y yes, of course. I'm Gareth, by the way. I'm Percival. Would you mind taking the moors on the right, then bring your knight? Oh, wait. Did he say Percival? Uh -huh. I think we're about to see how Percival fights. I'm already kind of liking him, too. So Percival seems very, very respectful and knightly. Alright, so Percival is a four-star Lancer servant. I don't know what his NP is. Um, one quick two arts, two buster for the things is a special buff. One who has reached the human limit. Increase attack and arts card effectiveness. His first skill, which may differ in her, his real version. Unceasing teaching, A, increase arts effectiveness, NP gauge for yourself, and MP strength for all allies for three turns on a six turn. Cool down. Excuse me, definitely seems arts based. Second skill is Percival, B+. A target focus for three turns and MP gain when damage for yourself. And to the Unsinned is his third skill, rank B, apply invincibility for one turn and restore HP to a single ally. Okay. Percival seems fairly tanky, I'll say. Fairly tanky and also fairly support heavy. Um, we'll start with a BAQ. The classic. Strange games. Alright, uh, we'll do that. And let's see if we so it'll be fine. And then we do 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 Now it's this Morris' turn, and we got a Gareth Brave Chain here. Uh, yeah, let's just go Gareth Brave Chain. Gareth Smash! Percival! He's definitely buffed up because of the first skill that he can not modify the end of his lost spell, but... Alright. Keep pushing forwards. I won, I can't believe it. I actually beat a Morse on my own. That was great. Don't sell yourself short. 
You're already strong, and you'll only get stronger the more you train. By the way, Gareth, right? I don't recall seeing you around here before. You should know there's going to be a big battle here soon. You'd probably be safer heading hearing to Norwich or Manchester instead of staying here. Unless you came here looking to join Londinium's Round Table Army. We could really use all the help we can get at this point. Even so, I'm not sure Londinium is the best place for a lovely girl like yourself. There are still lots of holes in the roofs we haven't gone around to cat patching up yet. Not to mention the ghosts that haunt us at night. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt, but did you really say your name was Percival? Yep, that's me. Good name for a human, isn't it? I'm pretty fond of it myself. Oh, please, let me introduce myself more properly. I'm Gareth, attendant to the Child of Prophecy. And I'm happy to tell you that she's making her way to Londonium right now. I'm not sure about that expression. That's either surprised or afraid. No battle note. Alright. It's really taking your time. Maybe I'm getting worked up over nothing, but I can't, but worry. You know, I think I'll go fetch some water myself. We can cross the hills after I get back. I'll go with... Huh? Looks like Garrett's back. Huh? I wonder why she's jumping up and down all excited like that. Oh, I see she has some money with her, too. Someone tall and pretty handsome. I recognize that oversized breastplate. Hey, guys. You'll never believe this. Look who I met. It's Percival. Leader of the Round Table Army, the strongest human in Britain. He looks embarrassed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know this isn't the most proper introduction. It's an honor to meet you, Child of Prophecy, and you, Foreign Mage. I'm Percival, the Round Table Army's acting leader. I know I'm dressed like a knight, but I'm really just an ignorant country boy. I've never studied the ways of chivalry, so I hope you can forgive any inadvertent rudeness on my part. Hey, Redra, why you worked up so much? You really don't know. Percival is the only person in all of Fairy Britain who rides into battle on the back of a fairy horse. He's the strongest, most spiritual human ever. I can't even think of a more touching sight than a rider and horse in perfect sync, each trusting each other with their lives. Just imagine a rider and their horse sharing one mind and one body. It would be a miraculous dream come true. Well, thank you. Country will be thrilled to hear that. I don't know what I'd do without her. No, oh, sorry. I got a little off track. I tend to do that whenever someone brings up my trusty partner. Anyway. I understand why you're here now. You feel a safe... You need a safe place to prepare for your court confrontation with the Queen's army. Yes? Then you're very welcome to stay with us in Londinium. I'm afraid it still needs a lot of repairs, so it's not in the best shape to welcome the Child of Prophecy. But it's also one of the most heavily fortified places in Britain, and I promise my soldiers and I will keep you safe while you plan your next move. Percival's a good guy. Definitely ruined. Supply team is back with lumber. Let's get to work repairing those ramparts. Send 80% to our outer walls and 20 to the inner walls. Focus on patching up the kids' homes first. The disguise merchants are heading out to Norwich this afternoon to buy supplies. If there's anything you need, add it to the list. Don't be shy, we've got the Count backing us. Just go easy on the luxury goods. Oh, Pepe is helping them out. Makes sense. <laughs> ah, remember, we can't match the Fang Clan speed. We need to fight smarter, not harder. Take a beat before following up your spear strikes. Your opponents will dodge them easily if you thrust too soon. Keep your spears pointed ahead of you as soon as you sense the shield coming. And don't forget to keep your sword in hand too, so you can stab your opponent on the flank at the same time. Don't bother with bows and arrows. You'll never hit anyone, and the enemy will see you coming with them the moment you aim. You have ten archers firing volleys from the ramparts for defense. That should keep the enemy back, but if they actually hit someone, even better. I only know how to sharpen blades, but I can still help. Look, mister, the tip of your spear is chipped. You'll never beat the fairy fangs with that. Why don't you stop by our smithy sometime? Not exactly pristine, but sure is lively. Everyone's running around keeping busy with something. At glance, it looks like they've got around 300 combat-ready soldiers, give or take. 
You count the humans seeking shelter here, that's about double their numbers. They probably have the old and feeble ones doing new work in the back. This is great, I love it. It's not an army as much as a whole city in the middle being rebuilt. I'm gonna look for brides. Well, I know what you mean. The walls and roads may be in terrible shape, but there's more life here than we've seen in any of the other cities. Of course, this is where London is located in property ministry. No wonder there's so much energy. Something wrong, Artoria? Oh, sorry, it's nothing. I was wondering why such a beautiful place was. Artoria. What were you thinking, Commander? You just can't go jumping off the ramparts and running off into the woods like that. You're the cornerstone of the Round Table Army. The hope of everyone in Londinium. The hope of everyone in Londinium. You can't just wander off because something caught your eye anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice you had people with you. Are you all here to join the Round Table Army? If you can come with me to registration at the town square, we can... That won't be necessary, my, my dear. These people aren't here to join us. They're very important guests. Isn't that right, Oberon? Yep, at least for now. Whether they end up joining the Round Table Army or not is ultimately up to Artoria. Oberon. Oh, wow, it is Oberon. When did you get here? Hey, everyone, it's Oberon. The big jerk Oberon is back. <laughs> big jerk Oberon. You're right, it's really him. It's Oberon the Cold-Hearted. You just showed up out of nowhere again. Where the hell have you been all this time? You better be sticking around for a while. You don't want to make the kids cry again, do you? Every time you leave, it takes a little longer to cheer them all back up. That goes for us ladies, too. You're sweet. Nothing's always makes us feel like princesses. Oh, we love those little moments of affection. You also need to take care of us afterwards. We still have lots of work to do, you know. Really, Oberon? Hey, it's not what you think, okay? I'm a very serious person here in London, I swear. Oh yeah, you're serious, all right. Serious about putting on performances every chance you get. Whenever you show up, the whole round table army goes back to being ordinary citizens. It's the closest thing we have to festivals around here. Don't get me wrong, it helps us keep us smiling even when times are tough, but... Wait, hang on. Didn't you say the next time you came back, you'd be bringing the Jottle Prophecy with you? No way. Is that... Oh, crap. That's right, this is Artoria, the saver of Norwich you've all heard so much about. Her staff of selection was sent here from paradise just like Percival's spear of selection. She's the child of prophecy, the savior of Britain you've all been waiting for. Oh, okay. Another no battle node. Artoria's embarrassed. She's the center of attention. Huh. It really is like a festival. I guess we won't be able to talk to Artoria for a while. It seems like everyone in town's caught, uh, caught the Child Prophecy fever. Maybe we should help her out, Oberon? I don't think she's too big on being fond of her like that. Oh, I'm sure she isn't. Artori has always been keenly aware of the pressure that comes with fairies putting their hopes on her. And at the same time, she's always been good at handling those very hopes. What do you think, Sol? Should we rescue her from that crowd? Yeah, she's not making the faces she usually does. Oh, well, you look happy about this, Sol. Is Artori really, really handling this differently than usual? She sure is. Usually she stutters and fumbles for words for, for guilt and lack of confidence, but not this time. This is Londinium, a city of dream that dreams of a proper future for Britain. The people she's talking to now aren't just hoping she'll save them, because they're only worried about themselves. She's seeing something much purer than that now. In fact, I'd bet she's actually proud to be the child of prophecy for the first time in her life. It's like her eyes have been clouded by everything she's seen all this time and she's finally seeing clearly. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. It's just a thought I had. I'm the Fairy King, after all, so I thought I'd try my hand at a little poetic figure of speech for once. Yeah, I'm not really sure what he was talking about there. I'm sorry everyone kept you so long. I hope it wasn't too much of a bother. Oh, no. No bother at all. They were all incredibly nice. You'll have to tell them I enjoyed my time immensely. On another note... Hermas is the one, only one who's not here. Is he still talking to the townspeople? 
Hey, sorry I'm late. Had to take care of something. Turns out they do have a smithy here, but it's a damn it's in damn shambles. They've got a great furnace, but the only one guy who knows how to tend it is, is worth a damn. They ought to come take a look see. Artorians want a hell of a fixer upper. They've got a ton of quartz crystals too, so you can make all the glass stuff you want. Oh really? That sounds great. I'll definitely check it out. But not right now. Percival is just about to show us the Round Table Army's war room. As a member of the Child of Prophecy's entourage, you're not allowed you are not to go off on your own like that anymore, got it? A child of prophecy's entourage. When you turn into Miss High and Mighty, you haven't even wrong one damn bell yet. All that attention go to your head or something? Nah, that ain't it. It's knock, isn't it? Hey, I get it. It must be rough seeing your old friend living up living it up as a queen. Then again, it's not like your two two are working with the same kind of materials. This is a shame you're a little too lacking in sex appeal to be a queen yourself. I heard that, Muramasa. <laughs> um. There's more than one way to be a king. Guess you're right. Sorry, Artoria. Should have been running my mouth like that. Nox or Weird Aura must have left a bigger impression on me than I realized. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you getting along so well. And I don't just mean the two of you, I mean everyone. I was worried that the Child of Prophecy might be a buckling under the weight of her incredible responsibilities. But it looks like I was worried for nothing. We can learn a lot from your example. Not at all. I'm the one who's learned a lot from the people of Londinium. I've been to plenty of different cities, and they all had various class differences and complaints about the Queen. <laughs> Even so, one thing they all had in common was a wish for someone to save them from their situation. But the people of this town are different. They're also honest, and they don't depend on anyone else. Now that I've talked to them myself, I see that there are fairies standing up for humans and humans standing up for fairies. They're not fighting just to fight for themselves. They're standing up to the Queen to make things better for everyone else. I think that's exactly what a true knight of the round table should be. People who don't stand above or below another, one another, but who all stand side by side, helping each other out. I have no way of knowing what a true knight of the round table is supposed to be like. But, it is tr but it's true that the round table army isn't just a resistance run solely for or by humans. We do want to change things for humans, but first we want to change all of Britain for the better. We don't differentiate between humans and fairies. We're just people who share a dream for the future. Even I'm no more than one of the many such people Lord Oberon assembled. Lord Oberon, huh? Oberon, you don't mean... No wonder you're so weirdly popular. That's right, Lord Oberon funded, founded the Round Table Army. He saved me when I had nowhere else to go, removed the curse on Lindinium, and carefully, quietly traveled Britain in search of like-minded people. And he works himself to the bone to keep us funded, though I've also heard he's earned quite the reputation as a notorious debtor throughout Britain. A lot of soldiers are under the impression that I'm the Round Table Army's leader. But I believe that the role belongs to Lord Oberon. Come on, cut that out. I've told you before, all I did was invest in this operation. You're the Round Table Army's leader, Percival. You're the one who grew to this size. <laughs> Alright, if you insist, Lord Oberon. Let's just say I'm, that I managed to find all these wonderful allies through one person's dedicated efforts, rather than good fortune. Anyway, now that you're all more... Simulated to Lindinium, let me show you our headquarters. Unfortunately, it's the only place so far to be both well guarded and have a proper roof. Sorry about that. Hang on, Percival. What's that picture up on the wall? Picture? Oh, that's a mural that was painted during the Fey era. None of us really know much about it, though. Ooh, mural time. Is that six fairies dancing around a large beast that almost looks like they're holding a festival? But I've never seen any beast like that in Britain before. Looks like some kind of monster to me. Maybe a personification of the Calamities. I don't agree with that. That beast almost looks like it loves them. I think so too. You probably can't feel it because you're a proper hero spirit, your Maramasa. But this beast is definitely depicted as loving. <sighs> Excuse me. No British fairy would ever be afraid of this mural. If anything, it'd be seen as grand. Well, because I'm proper human history, heroic spirit. Grand, huh? I can't tell how it feels to Gareth and Habitrat since I'm not a fairy myself. But this wouldn't happen to be a religious painting, would it, Percival? A religious painting? Sorry, I don't know what that word means. All I know is that this mural originally belonged to the fairies of Orkney, the Rain Clan. It's said that a, light of a knight of Londinium brought it here from the ruins of Orkney, while Londinium was still being constructed. Apparently it depicts the creation of Britain, and in old fairy language it's known as the Abyssal Worm. 
Bessel Worm. Oh, I see what the worm part is coming from. Uh oh. There's something wrong, Soul. Did you see something suspicious over there? Somebody's watching us. Hey Da Vinci, you said this was a religious painting, right? You mean you think it was a god? Yeah, it probably is. The six fairies shown here are obviously stand-ins for the six clans, probably the original forefathers. And whatever that big thing is, they're clearly worshipping it. That has to mean this creature stands above the fairies, which would make it a god. Another thing is, there are no gods in Fairy Britain. Like I said, the Greek cathedral is only for show. I've been to almost every city in Britain looking for information. I've never seen another mural like that. That's my point. This mural's been around since before Morgan's rule. Well, it's been around since before Fairy Britain was even a thing. I was expecting something from the Fairy era, before the era of the High Queen. Wait, then does that mean Queen Morgan doesn't know about this mural? Nah, she must, and it's probably no accident that was left out of history books. Once Morgan became queen, she wanted to be the only power the fairies believed in. So she erased the concept of God from Britain by, from Britain by pretending it never existed. That way, it could never throw, pose a threat to her rule. It may just be that this mural holds part of the answer as to what caused the calamities. And why there are no gods in Britain. <laughs> Too bad the only words on it aren't written in Old Fairian. I myself can't make heads or tails of it. Can you read it, Oberon? Here, look. This part here definitely looks like writing. I'm sorry, but no. I can kind of read the modern fairy language now, but this is beyond me. I guess only people who can read this are in Camelot's administration. I see. Well, that's too bad. Gosh, I had no idea this picture was so important. I'm sorry to, I'm too uneducated to help. Still, if it's important, I'll make arrangements to have it properly preserved right away instead of leaving it exposed to the elements. I'll also look for historians and have them dig around to see if there's any other notable artifacts. If we're lucky, they might be able to turn up some other precious records. Good idea, once we take over Norwich, we should have a lot more personnel to work with. Either way, we need to get to work on restoring Londinium. The, so the sooner we can put together a plan, the better. Uh, why? I'm sorry, did you just say take over Norwich? Oh, I... I was more focused on restoring Londinium. So we're going to be taking over Norwich. Another no battle node. And this will be the final node of section 11. Which, you know, we could very well go into section 12 today as well. Welcome to the war room. This doesn't look like it has a roof. We repurposed a room from the Vell Tower because it gives us a few of all of Londinium. We've also repurposed the rooms on the floor right below as guest rooms, so I hope you'll find them to your liking. There's more important things than that. Are you serious about taking over Norwich? I thought the Round Table Army's only enemy was the Queen. What reason could you have to attack anywhere apart from Camelot? You're right. Normally such a thing would be unthinkable for us, but we can't afford to ignore what's going on in Norwich. Your valiant efforts did lead to the destruction of the family at Norwich. But the incident the child of prophecy left Camelot, Spriggan petitioned the army the Queen for military aid. He claims that the residents of Norwich now support the child of prophecy and are now traitors to the crown. He's using the child of prophecy as an excuse to massacre fairies and take back his land. But he learned about this yesterday from a secret correspondence sent by someone calling himself a Count. Queen's forces will probably arrive at Norwich tonight. I doubt we have more than two days to spare. We've already put a call out for comrades across the land to come back to Londinium. As soon as they're all here, we'll set out for Norwich. Our goal is to occupy Norwich's gate and take control of the city before Spriggan can have its citizens massacred. Even if they paint us as barbaric invaders for doing so. I don't much like our chances at victory. Norwich's people aren't going to be happy to see us. Most fairies just think of the Round Table Army as a gang of militant humans. I doubt they'd see much difference between the Round Table Army and Spriggan, really. I can't give human militants. But please, I don't want you all worrying about that. We're the ones who made this call. This isn't your battle to fight. You're here to recover. You'll be safe in Lindidium. Not even the Queen's Mage Craft can reach you here. Soul. Uh, yeah, gotta be feeling pretty conflicted that this is all our fault. <sighs> you want me to be the one to say this, don't you? Don't you, Oberon? Let's go ring that bell, Artoria. Yeah, I guess you're right. 
Oh man, this is gonna be rough. Alright, I understand. I've made up my mind too. Percival, you haven't once asked for my help. And neither did the people of Lindidium. All you've done is encourage me and worry about me. You haven't demanded I save you in return or anything at all. You only wish me luck. So I'm gonna do my part too. I can't ring Norwich's bell by myself. I'm going to need your help. So please help me. Help me show everyone that the Round Table Army isn't some gang of militant humans. The comrades of the Child of Prophecy who are just as intent on in saving Britain as she is. It'll be my genuine pleasure, Artoria. Thank you. I can't say if this battle of ours will ultimately be for good or evil, but I can swear upon this land that we will do our best to make you proud. Allow me to fill you in on the makeup of the Round Table Army. We have one company made of about 400 fairies and humans under my command that serves as our main military force. We also have five platoons of about 50 soldiers each. Two of the platoons are led by two fairy knights who are part of the Queen's army, Aurelia and Etoil. The other three are led by human knights, Kenwood, Landon, and Calwes. I'll introduce you to the everyone later. We have another five squads made up of like-minded comrades, but they're still in training. Their instructor is Secretary McGair, who we all met earlier. Londonium is also home to a large number of civilians, as you saw for yourselves. They're the ones who handle construction, sewing, cooking, smithing, governance, and education. It's a lot of work for only 300 people, but we've all, they've all been doing a great job. Next, I should tell you about the city's reconstruction timetable and the amount of resources we'll need to procure each month in order to... Well, well hold on, Percival. Why don't you just tell me all that nitty-gritty stuff later? Right now, it's probably better if we just focus on the Norwich attack. I mean, see for yourself. See, they hit their limits a while ago. You'll have to understand, it's only been eight us uh, for a while now. So we really need to ease them into discussions involving the best use of thousands of personnel, you know? Y you're right. I'm sorry. I was just so touched by what Lady Artoria said that I didn't realize I was running my mouth. I'm so embarrassed. Oh no, that's okay, I get pretty rambly when I'm happy to. But could you just call me Artoria, like you did before? I don't really think I'm ready for a lady yet. Of course, Artoria. Alright, then let me try this again. We plan on sending half my company and three of our platoons to Norwich, which is about 400 soldiers total. In the meantime, the Count has gathered a group of anti-Queen, well, anti-Spriggan really, MPs and residents of Norwich who are also willing to fight. I'm told they number about 400 as well. So between ourselves and the Count's forces, we should have about 800 soldiers. That's what we'll have to defeat the troops the Queen sends from Camelot with, and help you reach the Bell Tower in Spriggan's castle. <laughs> 800, huh? Ain't much of you're hoping to take control of both the city and Spriggan's castle. Not to mention we'll be up against fairies, while half of our soldiers are human. You're not worried it might make it might be outclassed? No, I'm not. The Round Table Armor uses weapons and tactics that are optimized for fighting fairies. I have complete faith in our ability to make up for the difference in power. However, Spriggan's Vault Castle, as he calls it, will be too much for us to handle. It's an impregnable iron tower that neither human nor fairy can possibly break through. So I'd like to ask for your help in infiltrating it. Soul, Lord Oberon has told me you about your magecraft. He says that you're capable of summoning warriors in battle that can easily defeat an entire platoon. We won't be able to break through the vault's castle gates by sheer force. Our only hope is a small team to sneak inside and open it from within. It'll be a dangerous mission, but would you be willing to accept it? Yeah, I'm great at this, and so is Artoria, too. Just don't bring up Merlin to magecraft now, Soul. I'm also very much... Percival is pretty much confirming that he's being rolled for, by the way. Thank you, Sol. If you and Artoria are helping, I think we have a real chance for victory. As soon as we have out on patrol in the south, right now, we'll be back by evening. Once they arrive, we'll set out for Norwich. Ideally, we should be able to arrive under the cover of night and take control of the city before its brigade can react. I hope you don't mind that I'll be leading the charge once we arrive, Artoria. Not at all. This is your army. You should be giving the orders. All right. I'll go plan our attack with this new development in mind. The Count was kind enough to enclose a map with his letter that should help us secure a route inside. There really isn't anything he misses, is there? I'm, I accidentally clicked through the choices there. I expect we'll be leaving in about three hours. Until then, take some time to relax. Gotcha, I'm gonna go pay the textile workshop a visit then. That pile of unused cloth scraps was downright obscene. I know the weavers must be busy, but you could make so many new clothes for the children with that. So I'm gonna go help them out and prove just how dependable old Happy Cat can be. As me, I'm considering myself your apprentice now, Percival. So I'd love it if you could give me a few more lessons on how to improve my land skills. 
Of course, though I'm afraid I can only spare the time until the strategy outline comes in. I'm gonna go give the kids at the smithy some pointers. As far as I can tell, this whole city's only got one decent blacksmith and a bunch of apprentices. I guess I'd better go put on some overtime since I can't help much with the battle. Is there anything you'd like me to look for, Percival? Yes, I'd like you to see what's happening in Oxford. Woodwoes is the most likely of all the clan has to lose patience first. So after Norwich, I'm guessing he'll be our next major threat. I'm inclined to agree, yes. I'll talk to Aurora as well, see if she can keep him occupied for us. Alright, but I thought she only had self-defense force, not an army. Armies are just one of the tools she uses for fighting war, Da Vinci. You see, Woodwoes has a kind of thing kind of has a kind of a thing for Aurora lately. So if the woman he wants so much hasn't hasn't given him the time of day, suddenly so wanted to see him. That's cold over on. Oh, don't worry, Aurora's a lot more open-minded than you might think. She'll be genuinely happy to show Woodwoes some affection. No, it as kind as she is, you might actually make Woodwoes fall harder for her. And better make her understand being too nice to her might lead to that might lead him on a bit. Alright, I'm gonna fly off to Salisbury. If all goes well, I'll see you guys again in Norwich. Bye, Oberon. Okay, I'm gonna go introduce myself to Secretary McGare. What are you gonna do, Sol? Artoria? I'm gonna see Percival out. I'm gonna take Percival up on his kind offer and take a nap in the room below. It looks like we have a long night at time march ahead of us, so I'll need to rest up all I can. Um... Should probably... Yeah, you know what? We should check out on that draw. Oh yeah, unless well, I saw the kids were packed so tightly at Brent Coming in castles in town square, he could barely move. I imagine he could use some help right about now. Okay then everyone, please meet back here in three hours. Our assault on Norwich begins at sunset. Yep, check on Redra. He deserves it. Well, that is section eleven cleared. We have joined forces with Londinium. We got a quartz, three bells, three prisons, and three hellfires of wisdom. And next section is section 12. That is a short section, so we will definitely do that today. But I'm going to really quickly here split the stream. For those of you watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to tune in tomorrow for the next part of this grand Lost Belt adventure. But for now, thanks for coming out. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you tomorrow, everyone, on YouTube.